The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Friday, the 4th of August. We're looking at the Dow. <clears throat> Had a big move up to the uh, to uh, earlier on. It started off a little negative and then it zoop, went all the way to 35,414. Now it's up 54 at 35,269. The selling, I believe the tide has turned in the short term, not the medium, the weekly chart. That's the one in the middle, not the monthly, just the short term. We are now seeing lower highs and lower lows. That could be totally wrong, but that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, and now I can. I, I actually had this in yesterday, but then I, I had it shut down suddenly, so I, I lost it. I just wanted to put there, we shorted right at the top on August the 1st. And I don't know if it's going to be right. It just all I did is my technical indicators with the on balance volume. Look right there at that exact moment, the ictus right there. This little blue line made a turn right at that level. The stochastic was fantastic, but it was starting to slow down. If you look very closely at the MACD, you'll see that the MACD was starting to dip while the rare, the slow moving average was moving up, but it was narrowing. But my contention is that unless we see the gray line in the Dow, this is my chart that I've been showing for three weeks or more for more, until we see that gray line, which is the price of the Dow, go sharply lower to drag the green nine period exponential moving average below the 14. So it goes from green to pink. And we've already got the left side internal high, right side internal um, internal uh, oh, internal high and residual high and then the left side internal high right side internal uh, residual high and here slightly higher high internal high and then a residual high was a little higher just like an earthquake sometimes the aftershock can be a lot more than the earthquake itself now what we're looking at is <clears throat> does this start to move low I'll just do it quickly here to show you the S&P at this point, it's given back some of the gains. It's still acting quite well. It's at 45.03, up 1.93. But look at this. The 9 is so close to turning down. Look at the QQQ. The 9 is so close to turning down. Uh, the, the Qs are down 28 cents at 3.73. Look at the IWM. It's not close yet. It's like the Dow. It's holding very well. The price is down. It's at up, uh, down 75 cents at 193.80. Look at the SMHs, the semiconductors. Price is sharply lower. The nine is taking all this time, and it's still, even though the SMHs are down 98 cents from 153.7 at 153.18, it hasn't turned down. Um, and it made an all-time high just the other day. So we're watching this really closely. Look at the HGX index. This is the HGX. This is the housing. The price is pulled back, and yet that nine is starting to turn down. The black 14 period moving average was flat. Now it's just a little bit less than flat. It's tip, tipping down a little bit. Hasn't turned down. This is a process. It's a process that I've learned by studying and working and trading um, the uh, E-minis, over and over and over and over and over again. Look at this. Unless you have a powerful turnaround, look at the green nine period moving area. So this is the pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower. Happens very often in the futures when you get some kind of a news event and then by 10 o'clock it's reversed. So this went from the uh, 45, 30, 12, 13 area, whoosh up to the top at 45, 50.75. And now it's given back a lot, but it hasn't completely collapsed. It's holding. Now, this is going to be absolutely imperative to watch. Does the market find whatever the news was to have that sharp reversal? Is there still enough intraday residual strength? Well, at 10.20, we've got in 10 minutes' time, starts the next. It could actually start now because it's just been contracted a little bit. Starts this next session of a lot of fund managers saying, all right, we've had the fund for the first uh, uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. 
Now let's see exactly what's going to happen. Well, that's where we are right now. So we've seen in the one minute e mini chart, look how long it took. Um, let me just do this right here. So the um, it made a cup formation with the peak G. So there's your internal high, here's your residual high, and then that re residual high was at um, 948. It took until one, two, three, four, five sessions. Only on the sixth session did it turn pink. And now on the way up to see if it turns green, it's already one, two, three, four. So that's the way I've learned <coughs> to use the aperture, the distance between the green and the pink moving average or the green and the black, so in the black and the green or the black and the pink moving averages to say, are we looking at a more serious decline? The wider it is, the deeper it falls. Now, here's another thing. Look at this. Um, you see that blue line? I put that blue line in. This is a horizontal line much earlier. I wonder if it's still there. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's right. From much earlier, this goes all the way back. This is the line at 45.30. Actually, I can't find it. It goes back weeks where I say there's a midpoint in a long rectangle formation. This midline, 45.30, we're going to see it visited umpteen times over the next few weeks because that's what these horizontal lines can do. So lo and behold, we went above it, below it, behind it, behind it. then all the way up to the 45.50 level, whoosh, down to the 40, 45.19s, and now at 45.28, it's getting real close to that 45.30 level. So I like to look at all these things as little icons. It's like you're driving along. There's a stop sign. There's a yield sign. There's a there's a, um, um, a bicycle pathway. There's a bus pathway. There's someone waving you along. There's an inter here in Boston when they're doing all the roads. I bet in all the all the places around the country, you've got this. You can never plan to go anywhere in a certain at a certain time. That usually do it in ten minutes because there's there's a there's a truck doing something in the road. They're busy repairing the road. I love repairs of the road. I just don't like being in them. <laughs> so that's yeah. You know, this is what we're looking at. You know, you love to be short, but you don't like to see it go against you. You like to be long, you don't like to see it go against you. So within that context, let me get back to our story. And I said I'd do a whole bunch of things. So I just, I'd spent, I did Tommy Jr.'s uh, show just now, the um, market kickoff. He does a fantastic show. He does all the fundamentals that I never spoke about at all. Uh, he does them beautifully. I'm sorry, I just didn't do them. It's not my area of expertise. Uh, Dow is up 69 at 35,288. Still holding beautifully. It's above the 14 period moving average between the pink nine and the and the black 14 period moving average. Um, going to be watching this very closely. So a couple of questions came in earlier on, and I'm going to do them right now. Wait, have I finished everything? I want? Oh, I didn't do high grade copper. High grade copper is high grade copper is pulling back. At a nice peak, peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology from peak D up. You've got to be real careful. Well, peak D had a big pullback. Dollar just pulled back from a peak D. Or he's pulling back from a leg D. Maybe it's peak today. Got to watch this. EUSD, JPY having a bit of a bounce. That's the euro. Uh, peak, sorry, this is the yen. Peak D pulling back. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 77. S&P's up high. That's If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Just uh, I had a, I see in the den. I'm sorry, uh, GB, Gibalt. I, I didn't uh, realize that it was um, that it was just an intraday trade. So you had AAOI, which is uh, applied up. To, I can't even say after to tronic, I think it is. Um, yeah, you got out perfectly. It made a PG, it's in the rectangle formation, it's actually holding very well. But you got a chunk of that, and that's really good. And then I don't know if it were, what you were doing with Tupper, Tupperware. Uh, this is on the one minute chart. I'm doing that since you're doing an intraday trade. Oh, it had a big spike up peak A, and now it's gone B, and now it's made the arch formation. Within the rectangle, you've got to be careful of this pattern. Go sideways, cannot break out above it, and takes out the low. So that's that arch formation is filling some of the gap. Oh, you're already out of that. Okay. Um, so good. Let me do a couple of things here. I did some with the, in, in Tommy's show earlier on. So what I wanted to say is this. Um, let me just go back here. ES23, ESU23. Yeah, so now there's a bit of a balance going on in the even. There's still residual strength, and that's the fact. If you can identify in the context of, right here, in the context of a pattern, if you can identify where its own particular strengths and weaknesses are, that's, that's really important. So when I go back here and I'm looking at the, um, let's just go back to the Dow. Looking at the Dow, I'm saying that this particular index, the 9 over the 14, if it doesn't immediately take a dive, it's a process. If your other indicators are suggesting that there's some kind of a top, you've got to use this as some kind of a, you know, it's, uh, I was with uh, Tom O'Brien on the water out in Newport, and I was watching him, and he was, he, he was steering, but he was also watching the tide. He was watching the wind. He was watching. There were all these different, and the current, of course. You've got to look at all these different things. And here we are. It's exactly the same thing. You know, my, my eye says that there's some kind of topping formation forming. And all these other things are saying, all right, be careful of this. There's a buoy over there. You've got to move to the left. You've got to move to the right. And until I get to a certain point, I can't be sure that I'm clear. 
I, the traffic is still busy right here. So that's what we're looking at. And the reason why I wanted to uh, at least anticipate some kind of top forming was because if you look at this, now look, Amazon, this is a spectacular move. Uh, it made a, a top on a purely technical basis, a peak F top way back around about the 16th or so of July. is pulled back fairly sharply from the 136s down to the 126s. Uh, and then all of a sudden, and it makes the dreaded H pattern. What's the dreaded H pattern? If I can just find it, it's behind you. There it is. Uh, the dreaded H is when you go like this, you come down sharply and then you arch over at a peak A or a B, and then you take out the left side low. Look, it did it once. There's your dreaded H. Took it out. Amazon did it again. Right there, about the 18th. Pops up for one leg A. Fails. Takes it out. Goes to another A. It doesn't take out the left side low in the 125s. It holds it. And then today comes out an earnings report. And it's, it's just out. It's gone past all that resistance. In the weekly chart, that's a very different thing. Yes, leg D. All the technicals are positive. On balance one is very overbought, as it is in the daily. Um, but look what's on the left side. You've got a high right. I didn't do this. I thought I did that. Uh, you've got a high on the left side the week of the 19th of August at 146.57. Let me just type that in while we're talking. One, 146.57. And now what have you got? You've got you take your left side high. This would be the obvious peak right here to say, hey, can I do a left side, right side price time match from that? Well, it's, it looks like it would have been, wait, let's just say we're over here. It looks like that would be conservative. This would be more aggressive to the exact low right here, the beginning of uh, uh, January of 2023. So let's see what happens here. So you go click, you just double, the, double it up, yeah, you copy it. Change color because it's green on the right. Move it to the right and see what happens. And it says, uh, two weeks ago, it should have got to 145.57. Then you take your left side trough of importance. You do a Chapman wave in, inside wedge target, um, target resistance line. And this misses all, of the, all that stuff here. So when you're over here, you say, you know, that's a little... Eh, eh. It looks to me like it needs to touch some of the lines. So this is where it changes from a mathematical formula to an experienced formula, where you've done it so many times. And that just says probably it needs to go from this little tiny candle right here to the right side, and that gives you a better sense. Some of it is active while you, before you even getting to that level. And other, other is on the way. You've got to make changes. After all, isn't your objective to use every tool possible to help you? You can't say, oh, that's cheating. I already see the price is moving up. No, nonsense. You say, where can it go to? Well, you're using all the techniques you can. And that says by next week, that's the week of the 18th, two weeks' time, it could get to 145.57. That's if everything works out fine here with the green dashed, inside wedge target repellent line. So we'll see what happens, all right? But at the same time, you're saying, where's the support? Well, the support is now the high that was made at peak F on the 14th of July of 136.65. Well, five, five points lower. That's, let me put there, 136.65. So that's how I like to do this. Um, and you remember we had, I can't remember now, was it... George from Boston, who called right here. He said, I'm, I, I, where should I buy uh, Amazon? I'm, I'm starting position at 84. And I said, well, your risk is, you've got very little risk. This is a great time to enter it. And uh, I didn't do it for subscribers. It was dumb because uh, you know, Amazon's a fantastic company. It's not going away. Um, and look where it went from 85 and now it's at 141.54. Uh, fabulous entry. Congratulations. Um, okay. With that said, uh, what we're looking at here is buying does keep coming com coming in. And I think I'm not ignoring that. I think that's really important. Uh, the other aspect that I'm looking at here that is also quite important as far as I'm concerned is that 
Uh, I've got my notes here. I want to look at that. I want to look at that. I want to look. Yes. So, um, square. Oh, I don't know why they call it square. Uh, square used to be, uh, now it's called block. I don't know why they changed it from square to block. That just doesn't make sense. Block, I understand block technology. Had a little bit of a disappointment today. It went to a peak GSAS-C five sessions ago uh, in the 80s. And here it is at 64. It's down 12, it's down $9, $9 at 64.17, down 12%. Well, um, this is a stock that was trading at a 289.23 back in August of 2021. Let's see, this is August 2023. I'd say in two years, it's had a bit of a ride. Uh, 51, it, it went down to the 51 area, and it's really struggled in this rectangle formation. So, yeah, be careful. So, the, I can't remember what the question was, what should I do? Oh, I think, uh, where would you buy it? Wait, you've got to wait, wait, wait. I, I'd like to see how it tests the 62 to 60 area. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, I agree. More dimensions in a block than a square. Um, anyway, I got used to uh, a square, now it's block. Okay, we're looking at the Apple Sharp move down. There's the dreaded H pattern that we talk about. And I was warning about this yesterday, that this is the pattern we've got to look for. It already gone under the left side low yesterday, but I said we don't know if it's going to hold or whether it's going to break down because you could have a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. We've just got that with Apple down at 185, down 6. And it's a peak E with a doji candle. Um, 
three weeks ago and big red candle. Yes, your channel line. You don't even need it because you've got your 14 period moving average. But look, the line is still way above the 14. It's going to take time for Apple to go negative. We'll see if it does that over a period of two, three weeks. Now, a couple of things I want to look at here is um, advanced micro devices. I was asked about AMD. This just looks, it just looks sideways to me. Now, it might be from the chart pattern that I'm looking at from the high that was made back in June up in the 133, 34 area. <clears throat> it looks to me like advanced micro devices, semiconductors is missing out on whatever is going on right now. It's just not in the ballpark. It's been out of the ballpark because it plummeted from that air. I shouldn't say plummeted. I know it's a pretty sharp drop. Uh, it dropped to the 106 area, and it's now at 115. I just think it's digesting these gains. It's taking its time. Uh, it did go for one day pink. The nine period moving average today it bounced. It's up 278 at 115.90. Where would you? Uh, uh, to where would you buy if you wanted to build a longer term position? If you're building a longer term position, the only thing I could say is your first step would be to nibble right here at 116.03. I think that if it takes out 105, it's going to go quite a bit lower. But the fact that it's been five weeks in a sideways congestion move says don't overestimate the downside and don't underestimate the upside it means it's in the range and until it breaks that range you don't have to really do anything so that's my recommendation nibble here at 100 but when i say nibble i mean just get your foot in the door so that every day you're seeing the action how it's acting how it's acting to, like the smhs are now up only a quarter point but they're really sort of struggling as an overall uh, sector index uh, i should mention that we are short the smhs but we got a fairly tight stop. And most importantly, what we're looking at here is the um, advanced micro devices. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA has consolidated, but that consolidation up there is a way prettier looking one than advanced micro devices. It's almost at all time highs. Even as you speak, 449 all time high was around about 480. Now, you know, that's not too bad. Look at um, uh, maybe Intel. Yeah, Intel is also consolidating, but it's in the upper range. So uh, in terms of Intel or advanced micro devices, just chart-wise, in the shorter to intermediate term, I say Intel actually looks a little bit better as a chart. So I'm just saying I'd be a little careful, and I'd only do a little nibble, and maybe we'll just have to reassess it. Let's say the next Seven points up or seven points down is going to be quite important for advanced micro devices. MU, um, oh, I haven't updated this for a little while. Yeah, that's that's acting quite nicely. Actually, ABC just made a peak D right there. Now it's digesting the gains. Mm, yeah, so all I'm just saying is if that was the question, and the next question was uh, the dollar, do I think this is just a bounce that's going to in the weekly chart? Yeah. I'm treating this as a bounce, even though in the long term, we're so long from 2018 and long the dollar. Watch it. You have huge gains. We're taking little bits off on the upside. But I, I, I'm I, holding it for a different position, a different reason altogether. So the dollar index, um, I call it an icon, like a Harley Davidson icon in, internationally. The dollar is where most countries go to if they're looking for a currency of repute. So that's, I'm looking at it very differently, and the American economy is the same sort of thing. So uh, that's it. So a couple of questions came in. Well, another one. So in the meantime, if the dollar takes out on a closing basis 100, it's at 101.96, you say, oh, 100 is nothing. For the dollar, it takes a while to actually move. Uh, it doesn't move that sharply. It looks like it's sharp, and price-wise, it's nothing. If it closes under 100 in the next week and off, then I think that's a problem. And then you're going to see the euro. And I think you'll see gold move up. I just think the dollar at this particular point is a currency of relief for many, for many big, big investors and countries. So that's the dollar. The next question was, where's a good entry point for Boeing? Boeing went to a peak E. It's pulling back. It broke out of this huge cup and handle formation. Usually cup and handle means it comes right back. So 219 is trading at 232 right now, up a dollar. And three cents. You know what? 
a good entry for Boeing, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to say, I believe that Boeing in the whole cyclical area is starting to see, if you look at jets, I have to look at jets because that's the U.S. Um, airline index, basically. If you look at jets, what do you get? You're at a peak E, you're pulling back. You're at a peak D in the weekly, you're pulling back. You're at a leg B in the monthly. I think that there's a chance that there's a bit of a slowdown, especially when you're looking at crude oil holding quite nicely like this. Maybe they hedged, I don't know. But I'm just going to say Boeing is a supplier to these airlines, right? Um, it also has other areas of interest, government work, etc. But I'm going to suggest... Now, a person asked me, I know you don't use options. I would have said I'd be looking out at September or maybe even October, and I'd buy a monthly October call. Uh, it closes around about 20th of October, and I'd buy a f not quite in the money, just a little out the money. Maybe it's at 232 right now. I'd say I'd buy a 235 because I know exactly what I can lose. But the high that was made just the other day of 244 something, that would be a, at least a shorter term target. But you're looking where to get in, and I know that you like longer term positions. So you see this gap underneath 221.77 on the 26th, and the low the day before, the high was 214.82 from that low to the, the high the previous day. So I think it'll fill some of that over the next three weeks. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Even more importantly, what I've been looking at is, okay, so 221. Oh, this, is, this is a tough one because it's acting so well right now, even with this little pullback and the weekly chart. I like it. Um, I might have to do the same as I just said uh, to the question on um, on whatever it was we were looking at before. <laughs> Let me have a look. Um, oh, advanced micro devices. That because I'm looking out and I think it looks very positive going out towards September, October, I'm going to suggest that you take a starter, just a real, this is not a nibble, this is like a starter position here at 232. Be prepared that 10 points down, which is 5% or about 4%, is a possibility. Now, I need just a little bit of time. I'm going to take this moment in the break because I actually it's a question that came to me a couple of times over the last couple of weeks, and I, I really haven't dealt with it properly. I'm going to do that now. Hold tight. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So I'm just writing down a bunch of things that we need to look at here. So let me just go to the, uh, so the question about Boeing. So the, the way I'm looking at Boeing right now, this is very steep move up and a sharp move down, but only halfway into just from the gap up of the candle. It's just saying to me, it's acting extremely well. Um, I know that you, the questioner is a long term wants to be a buy and holder, but is prepared to be flexible. So I'm going to do this. I would like you to hold off another two days. Let's go into Tuesday, because even if it bounces a little bit, it's a 233. The high today is 233.07. Even if it bounces towards the 235 level, I'm pretty sure from the chart formation that it'll come back a little bit and the nine is over the 14 but in this case it's still accelerating to the upside so i'm going to say give it another couple of days if you want just to set your foot in the door then in this particular case a little bit more than a nibble in other words you actually start a little bit of a position here at 233 and the reason I say that, because Boeing has shown so much strength with this building of this base here, um, with a beautiful bowl formation, that even if it pulls back, you've got your support. It's going to have to be really bad news to just tank it. So if you are prepared to put in a 10-point stop, you could start your position here. I personally would wait a little bit longer, but I know that in your case, you don't usually wait. Once you get it and you've done your analysis, you hop in. I think that's not a bad idea. So in your case, maybe you can start at 232 right now, 230, under two, 233. I personally would wait for the 227 areas, five points. It's not a big deal when you're talking about a 233 stock and your target is at least as high that was made back in 2021 of the 260, 270 area. So in that particular instance, I'd say, okay, you can start your start your positions right now, but uh, just this is a startup, a real, a, a small startup position. It's not a nibble and it's not a real startup position. It's a small startup position. All right, I hope that answers your question. Um, as next question came in, let me write it down. Yeah, so look, I, I spoke about this in greater detail before, but I'll just cover it one more time. Look, the TNX made a leg D, sharp pullback from that peak D, from that leg D. Is this going to be uh, just a, is, was this just a horrible scare? And all of a sudden now you've got your big pullback in the yields. That's what we're going to be watching. And I'll, I'll go back to the HDX index which is holding quite nicely. Look, it's not a bad move. Up 7.16 and 570.72, taking its time. But the, the rollover says to me there's a chance that there should be a digestive phase in, in these home builders. How it unfolds is going to be important. So that was the TNX. Uh, sharp move down. It is in leg D, so we haven't got a peak D. You have to make a lower high than 42.06 to make a peak D. But by Wednesday of next week, Wednesday to Thursday, 
if we take out 42.15, in other words, we get into the 42s and we're actually trading there, that says watch out that 43.33 highs, it becomes the target. But in the shorter term, if there's a pullback from 40.90 right now, under 40.28, that's the nine period moving average. Wow, that's a very sharp pullback. And that says, ah, now it's going to take a little bit of work for the yields to get back up there. So yes, I think this is the moment to be looking at, are we about to see the scare from the sharp drop, the speed of the sharp drop ameliorated because it kind of goes sideways. And that's the question. I can't answer that question. I can just say that's something we're looking at. Next question was, um, I did that, I did that, I did that. Oh, Dunkin' Donut. Oh, Dunkin' Donut. DK, I always think Dunkin' Donut, but it's not. It's DK and G. This is the uh, DraftKings Sports Betting. Had a big spike up. Good, good results today. Leg F in the weekly, leg C in the monthly. And, a, and, and a G, I'm calling it a G for now, and then I'll make any changes after this. But very good action, up 222 at 32.22. It once hit 74.38. It once hit 9.77 in March of 22. This is a fabulous uh, threefold, more than threefold uh, rally. I, I just think now it's going to have a bit of a digestive phase. Excellent. I love this. We haven't. I kept wanting to get in, never got in, and it just kept. Look, it, it barely has a consolidation. Walks the nine period moving average, which in the weekly is at 28.80. And here it is at 32.30. So I like I like it very much. I just think it's it's gonna it's due for a bit of a breather. That's all. Uh, another question. Oh, E E M E E M. Oh, I did this and then that's exactly what I did yesterday. Then I lost all the data. Um, and I've, I don't know how many over the years. How many times do you think I've notated E E M? It's there in my files somewhere. I just don't know where. E uh, not E A A. Weekly is A, B, C. Underneath it, you've got to count each peak because this is your starting point right here. So no matter what, you count each successively higher peak. So this becomes an A. That becomes a B. And that becomes a C. That becomes a D. And that becomes an E. So underneath the previous high of C, you've already got a peak E. So you've got to be a little careful here. Gosh, I had this notated I'll do this technical Friday, so I'll do this from the very beginning. I always go to the left side to what is very much obviously the lowest low bar, peak A, peak B, peak C, D, E, double top, up, down arrow, up arrow here, right here. This is easy to do because um, I'm doing it in historically. There's a very successful H pattern right there, dreaded H, holes. And then it breaks. It holds and then it breaks, but it closes above. But it does it as the MACD expands and the stochastic expands, on bounds one gives you a buy signal. So that was a good starting point. And it goes peak A, B, C, if I remember correctly. And it, does it go to the D, A, B, C? And there's your D. Pulls back. So it's another buy. Mode. This is the. Um, Emerging market ETF right here. Yes, I think it's digesting gains. Did that make a D? Yep, there's your A. How many Ds do we have? A, B, C, D. Unbelievable. All right, that went to an E. Went to a D and then two bars A went to an E. That one went to a D and this one went to a D. It's digesting gains, the 200 period moving average of 32.82s where it could come back to if it, if it, if it closes any day under 30, no, what did I say 30? I mean 40, this um, 50 period moving, under 40.20. It's at 40.74 right now. If it closes under 40, it's probably going to test the 39.82 and then get stuck there as it has done many times before. Um, I can't put a down arrow in because it's closing. Well, it's closed twice now under the uh, black 14 period moving average, but it hasn't turned negative yet. So it could still do that. All right. So that's the EEM. There's the daily chart. I finished the weekly chart a little bit there. Uh, there. Are. Okay. Question came in here. We've got. We have Rich in Oregon. Rich, how are you? Fine, Basil. Thanks for taking my call on this Absolute fabulous pleasure. chart. You'd like to look at. CVI. I wanted to That's know what your Chapman wave was indicating to you. 
Okay, I'll be back in a moment. We're on with Rich in Oregon. We're looking at CVI, 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 Energy Inc. We'll be right back. Dow's up 193, S&P's up 90. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're on with Rich in uh, our going to be looking at CVI Energy. So, Rich, what, what are you doing? Well, I currently own it. I'm, I'm wondering whether... This should be should be sold or held for the next okay. four months. Just let me do this before we run out of time. I'm going to do some work on it over the weekend because I've done all the notation as it stands right now. I love the action of this stock. Um, I would like you to hold it, but whether or not you take a little bit of as part of money management, that's another thing. So I don't think you need to do anything right now, even if it's within 30 or 50 cents of the price on Monday. I'll have a look at it on Monday. It has made a peak E-top in the daily chart. It's holding very nicely for three bars. But the target I have is the left side high, and it should do that within the next couple of weeks, which is at 41.26, uh, the week of the 18th of November. So with that said, let me do a little work on it. I don't think you need to do anything right now, unless just because you asked me the question, I would say take a little bit off as part of money management. It's had a spectacular mood. It is ready for a little bit of a, a, a breather, but so far this is good. So I'm just going to say, let me do, I'll come back to it on Monday.
but I want, don't want you to do anything just yet. Okay, Basil. Okay, I appreciate and, uh, co congratulations. This is a re this is really a buy and hold. It probably gives a nice dividend. So I, you know, I don't want to mess with something that you've been in so long. Let me do a little bit more, more work on it. Okay. Okay, Good. I'll tune in on Monday. Great. I'm expecting to. I'll, I'll make a big note of it, and you just remind me just in case I forget. But I, I'll be doing work on it. So, folks, as we're out to wrap up, yes, the Dow's having a really good mood. This is not very bearish action at all. As I say, I think it's a process that's going on. And if you're looking at the Dow right now, um, that nine period moving average, look, it's gone above it. So this is this is taking its time to unfold. Um, there is bad news. It's ignored some of the bad news. Uh, we'll see what happens if, if after 1.30 it is only up maybe 80 points. It says maybe Monday it pulls back.